So what we're doing today, we're working on shallows and the flats. You can see I got my swivel right there, three ounce weight just down from that. Nice leader line down to a 4 -oh hook. Crystal's at the front of the boat. She's got a bobber, same 4 -oh hook. She's gonna work the mangroves with a bobber and a shrimp. We're using shrimp and mud minnows and we're gonna see which one bites and go from there. So we're gonna try and get him in and see what happens. Just as of course as I'm baiting a hook. Like I say the waves were rocking out of the boat. So try and get a better angle on it and go from there. Get this one back in the live well. Lock him up. Sorry about the Recording here, I'm trying to get in position. I got two cameras going. I'm gonna try and get two angles if I can. We got her fishing, reeling it in. Come on. It's the first time I've had to work two cameras by myself, but one of them should get good footage, if not both. We're gonna see how it goes. It's heavy. It's so got something with a little size to it, apparently. It's our first fish of the day. We thought we were gonna get skunk. We were starting to get worried, but now we're feeling a little optimistic. So I'm gonna keep trying to keep one oh, camera on her. The other on the fish. It. It's running. It's running. Come to me, mama. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, yeah. That's serious, whatever it is. I'm going to try and keep this camera focused on Crystal. Oh, oh it's a big giant cat. Big cell cat. It's awesome color on it. Give me a rod oh, holder behind goodness. you. Rod holder behind you. Is that rod holder? Yeah. All right. So we got a big cell cat. No, no Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna hand her the camera. Alright. The easiest way to do it when you get a big one like this, try and find a spot to lay him down. He has very sharp barbs and he is very upset, obviously. He has a hook down his throat. So we're gonna do this. Alright, so now that's what it looks like the big cell cats. So what we're gonna try and do is if we see if we can get that hook back. The pliers are right there, Crystal. I can hold him if you can reach down in there and get our hook back. All right, put him in there on oh, ice. I gotta wash up. And then we'll start again. So I felt this slow, steady drag on my line. It's slowly bringing it closer and closer to me. And just then I felt a dead weight pull. So I'm thinking I got something on here, but I say the current's been playing games with the weight on here trying to keep this weight stable so I'm not sure I felt a dead weight pull a couple times but it didn't pull back against me really hard so we might have something on here we might not thinking yep there now it's finally pulling back in yeah it wasn't big I thought I had something so it's a cell cat and they're like I say they're the best eating of all the catfish he's a keeper you just ain't big I say Get a hold of him without getting stuck. Unfortunately, the cell cats are the slimiest of all the cats. I mean, I would just nasty how slimy these things get. Get this hook out. Get him all nice. Is that the one where we need it? Now we'll throw out one more time. That one's barely. We wanted one more. We want one more. A little bit bigger. Switched up our gear a little bit. We got the bobber all. I got the second line. I double hooked with swivels. 
threw it out. We got a couple hooks and a couple different kinds of bait. As it's going along, I felt a little something tug on it, so we're going to bring this in and see if we got a little more food for our table. And there it is. Oh, you had a double. I was like, catfish number three. <laughs> Bait of choice seems to be shrimp, and catfish seems to be the key. It's another, oh, another good, nice little eater catfish. Throw him in. I'll make sure those get down in that eye. And this is that happens. Crystal gets one hooked onto hers, so I'm gonna try and get around here and get this one safely out of the way. Y'all, excuse me doing that for a second. Sorry, I lost the camera angle for a minute, but. Here's what we got. So I'm bringing that little one today, but it looks like she might have another one with some oomph to it. So we were about 30 minutes from going home when we moved to this spot here. Haven't had any luck all day long. And now, we found the channel. It's not a we marked this this morning and fishing. Yeah, we saw this morning they were fishing the area marked on. Ah, well. well and now, another good catfish. Hey, I got another big one. All right, I'm gonna hand the camera over. You can hand me them, put the, the rod in the rod holder and grab them pliers, Crystal. And that one was on a mud minnow. So we officially have enough food for dinner. So in the cooler we got her two big ones, my two little ones. So we have enough food for dinner. We got a couple more minutes out here, a little bit more bait. We're gonna throw back in. We'll see what we can do. Good morning and welcome back. It is the next day. We did the catfish video. You saw that the other day. Went out and got some more catfish. Different kind of catfish. We got these beautiful cell cats right there out of New Smyrna. Cell cats are my favorite as far as the catfish go. Last time you saw me do one where I filleted it. I still can't find my catfish pliers, but I have good old cobalt channel locks. So today I'm gonna show you how to skin one. This is a little good one right here. We eat these whole, this the way I'm gonna do it. And that nice big cell, I'm gonna come in right behind it, score that skin just like we did when we filleted it. Score it across the top. Come down side. Once again, they have the plate in there. Just find that little plate, just score it, and we're gonna work all the way around the fish. I say just nice light pressure with a knife. Make sure you got a good sharp knife. Once again, using my Dankos. So just nice score. Anytime you get a little thing like that, just use that point. Once you get it scored, this is the fun and hard part. With a good set of catfish pliers, it's easier, but I'm gonna try it with these. I've done it before. I want to get a hold of just that skin. Now you got to watch these barbs. Get a firm grip on the head, just like that. Get one side started, come over, get the other side started. Once you get it going, don't yank it, just a nice steady pull. Pulls right off. I'm going to discard that. I'm going to set it back down. Now I want to take my knife and right in behind that top fin again, right through that backbone. We'll go down, cut nice and clean. Make sure you don't have anything left in there. And for these little ones, you got the little rib cage right there. Those little ribs, you got some sticking out like that. Grab them and yank them. But should you leave this nice piece, you got your little bit of white skin here and there. So just walk and check it out. A little bit of skin right there at the tail. A little bit of skin right there at the tail get that all clean that's a lot of meat ribs and backbone tails to crisp up that little fin right there we're gonna put them in our water discard the other part here and that'll be a perfect little hole fryer we got one more small one little hole fryer to do and then we got our two big ones I'm gonna do the fillets out of those so what we'll do is we'll see you back in the kitchen in a little bit 
Welcome back. We're all cleaned up. We're in the kitchen now. Um, you saw us clean the catfish, doing the skinning this time. Last time you watched us fry it. We're doing the little nuggets, frying some catfish again. We've got a couple of small ones. We're doing the whole fryers. Since we've showed you that before, for a couple meals now, we've used tartar sauce. We usually make our own tartar sauce at home. So today, for the cooking part, we're going to show you the tartar sauce. What we're going to start out with is just the mayonnaise. Just get a generous portion, and it depends on the size of your family and how much you want to make. So that would be a large portion and that'll last us. Usually when we make a batch of this, it lasts us multiple meals. Next thing I like to do is a little bit of yellow mustard, not a spicy mustard, not a brown, just yellow. I just want just a little bit. Adds a little bit extra flavor to it. Excuse me, Tommy. As Tommy comes in to sneak some peppers that we got cut up. And Tommy, the big ones are for you, buddy. Yeah, the big ones. All right. Another little thing to add some spice and some flavor, Worcestershire sauce. So put just like I said, you're not doing too much, you just want a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Helps with the flavors. Classic dill relish. Dill is the other large ingredient we'll be using. We want plenty of relish in here. And then when I scoop it, I also want to make sure I try and get down to the bottom and get the, the juice. So a lot of relish. Relish is one of those key ingredients. I like to take a little bit of lemon and a little bit of lime. Add that zest. If you got real lemons and you got real limes to squeeze in, that's even better. But if not, these little containers, nice and cheap, easy to get a hold of. Any of your local grocery stores. And then <laughs> the last big ingredient is our garlic. And the same thing like I did with the relish, I want to get to the bottom. We're not going to put a ton of garlic in there. We just want a little bit of garlic, but we've got the juices out of it too. So put that garlic in there. Discard that spoon. Stir my fish real quick that are in this pot. I want to make sure they're not sticking to the bottom and burning. So give them a quick stir. Come back over. Salt. Just regular old ionized table salt. And black pepper. And then we just want to kind of mix everything together. Once we start mixing it together, and once we get this mixed, we're going to put it back in the fridge until the food is ready. One thing I like to do, get it mixed early. You see, it looks like regular tartar sauce. So it doesn't change the color that much, adding that little bit of mustard and Worcestershire. But got all that relish in there, all those juices, a little bit runnier than what you'd see at most of your restaurants. That's just because a little bit of the extra flavor we added in. So what I always want to check, I'm going to grab my spoon I had for the pickles earlier, and I'm going to rinse it real quick. Got a nice clean spoon. I'm going to do a taste test. Me, me, me. It's just a touch more salt and pepper. Me. I'm going to stir it again. I want to taste it. Okay. Can we get a spoon? Tommy, can we get a little spoon? Get have one for your brother. That should be good. What we're going to do, we're going to bring in our taste testers over here. What we're trying to do is kind of balance the sweetness of the mayonnaise and the with the dill pickles. And Tommy, that's a big spoonful. Let me split that between you and your brother. Since we're just tasting it. All right. There you go, Carl. Good? What do you think? Good. Good. Oh, nah, no! <laughs> that's yours. You don't double dip your spoon, son. Every people got to eat out of there. What do you think, Carl? All right. All right, Carl. Can you put those in the sink, buddy? So what we're going to do, we're going to get back to our fish here. We're going to put this in the refrigerator, and we'll see you when we get to the table. We are back at the dinner table once again. We have our plate setting out, and like I say, I'm going to show you our plates. Show you a couple different plates here. We'll start out with mine like we normally do. And you can see I got my salsa, my cheese, got these fresh red peppers, some cilantro, a little bit of onion. Got the fish on top. We're going to roll that up. Crystal's got the same thing, just stacked a little bit differently. Carl and Tommy are going more of a deconstructed. He's kind of a little cheese quesadilla, big chunks of the red pepper. The nuggets and the sauce, just like Carl. And before we start eating, uh-oh. We start eating early. What do we need to do before we eat, Tommy? Say prayer. We gotta say our prayer. Who's gonna pray tonight? Me. Y'all too? All right, Tommy. Go ahead, buddy. Good night tonight and a good day tomorrow. And Carl? Carl. 
tomorrow. Do you want to say anything in a prayer? Mm. Mama? Thank you for the fun we had on the boat and the good weather and the rain that's on its way. All right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good job. All right, Tommy. Go ahead and try those catfish nuggets. We already saw him eat this pepper. Catfish good. nuggets with the homemade tartar. Good, good, good. All right. And since I already tried this. Yep. And Carl burrito, is tearing it into good. his quesadilla, which is being dipped in the tartar sauce. But that's Carl. He dips everything. And now we're going to Crystal. Mm. That's really good. I didn't get tartar sauce yet. But that's always good. So, Oh, there it is. Mm. Oh, good. And just in case you're wondering, we still have the two little priors here. So one of us will get to them in a little bit. But first, we just want to say thank you for once again watching. Uh, please continue to watch, like, enjoy, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thank you for being part of our lives, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.